I am Babla Jonathan and this is the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital Douala. And our top stories in this edition of the news, Northwest Governor Adolf Lele Lafik threatens to sanction absentee civil servants in his area of command. He was speaking in Fundong after his convoy was attacked by pro-independence fighters along the way to Fundong and back to the northwest regional capital Bamenda and the people of Amchide in the far north region of Cameroon live in fear as a result of a rising insecurity in that part of the country and the security situation of the Republic of Cameroon was being examined by the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense and other top security officials in the nation's political capital Yaoundé few days to back to school 2019-2020. We begin this newscast in the crisis-stricken northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, where the convoy of the governor, Adolf Lafrig, was at attacked by separatist fighters and the governor was heading to Fundong to distribute some humanitarian aid and of course within the framework of back to school campaigns in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and the governor threatened to sanction all civil servants who will be absent at their duty posts and of course the governor continued urging all to do everything possible for effective back to school, of course, a return to normalcy in the northwest region of the country. Details in the upcoming report by Smart Jikan Gebre. The military clears the way and scares off unknown gunmen as Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique travels to Fundong in the Boyo Division. The distance of five kilometers was done in five hours instead of two hours as a result of an attack that the convoy witnessed on its way. We saw on our way coming here how it was difficult to reach Boyo. But thanks to the professionalism of our security services, we were able to arrive Boyo to work and to raise the morale both of the administrative authorities, the security services, and the morale of the population, promising them that the head of state has taken necessary measures to accompany class resumption in the Northwest region and here in Buyo Division. As the convoy journeyed to Fundong and back, at least 168 barricades were met on the way, and at each point, the military had to clear it off. Several villages along the way have also been deserted, like the Belo Market and the Belo Checkpoint. After the tedious journey, Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique's convoy finally arrives in Fundong with some humanitarian aid and words for the population to return to school. The Fundong Council Hall, expected to host the meeting, was extremely big due to the lack of people. For this reason, the governor was forced to hold his meeting with administrative and security officials at the senior divisional officer's office. The governor was very clear on the case of civil servants who have abandoned their seat in the trouble hit region. Civil services are concerned. Huh? We see the opportunity of this uh, visit here, like as well in the region, to condemn the, the civil servants that are earning salary without working. So they are even using the salary to fuel the crisis. And I would like to disclose to you that uh, on the Friday, I signed uh, more than 100 decisions sanctioning civil servants in Norway that are not going about their daily activities. And the process will continue. 
For the back-to-school campaign, the governor believes it's manipulation and urges parents to send their children to school come Monday. Our children, like anywhere else in the world, have the right for education and to strongly condemn those that are trying to hinder the future of our children. Some of them are seeking for greener pasture abroad and even trying to have other nationalities. We strongly condemn them and commit ourselves, our collaborators and everybody to fight against them and make sure clams resume effectively in the Northwest region and here in Boyo division. Due to the absence of the population, the humanitarian aid brought by the governor was left at the SDO's office. If the journey from Bamenda to Fundong was just five hours, the return journey was about 13 hours because the confrontation between the military and the unknown gunmen was more fierce, with some vehicles keeping souvenirs on them. At one point, even the armored car was dragged by another heavy-duty car after it witnessed a technical fault. It was a long night for the governor and his delegation that went to Fundong and back to Bamenda. And Cameroon's minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Petit, as someone, other top security officials of the country were examining the security situation of the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon and other parts of the country, including the far north and, of course, the east and the country as a whole. Today, they were meeting in the nation's political capital, Yaoundi, less than three days to back to school. Hemin Iluga reports. For the Far North region, the security crisis has been on administrative tables for approximately five years today. The infiltration of the insurgent Boko Haram in the third region has recorded huge damage as many have abandoned their houses, searching for more safe areas of settlement. Others have lost their lives without exempting material and infrastructural damages which has been recorded in the third region. As if it wasn't enough, from one peaceful Cameroon came in the present alarming situation in the two English-speaking northwestern southwest regions. There, the instability on its part, which has so far ravished the peace, which reigned in the region yesteryears, has left everything turpsy-turvy. Be it in the far north, northwest or southwest regions, the unfolding nature of the crisis has hindered school activities so far. Children have been systematically prevented from acquiring knowledge in classrooms and most have today become internally displaced who today are in quest for serenity. These are thus some of the burning realities which have prompted the security meeting chaired by Minister in Charge of Defence, Joseph Betty Asomo. Our meeting is taking place on the eve of the resumption of the 2019-2020 academic year, which, as usual, is already leading to significant movement of peoples, people and goods across the national territory. In addition to the usual challenges that this period of the social life of the country imposes on us, we equally have to deal with both endogenous and exogenous causes Given the current security context characterized by socio political and security turmoil in the northwest and southwest regions, the resurgence of the Boko Haram terrorist threat, organized crime in the Adamawa region, and the threat in the eastern border. With uncountable back-to-school initiatives, for instance, taken in the troubled regions, Minister alongside his collaborators aspire effective school resumption in all turn regions, and particularly in the crisis-hit regions. Even though rain prompto attacks have been recorded in the past in the third regions, precautions taken henceforth seek preserving a secure atmosphere in the troubled regions and the country at large with children going to school in safety and assurance. And the people of 
Amchidi in the far north region of Cameroon are living in fear and uncertainty and this is because of the rising insecurity in that locality with recurrent attacks by militants of the Nigerian terrorist sect Boko Haram. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. Hamshide, located in Kolofata subdivision, Mayo Sava division of the far north region, has been in the dark for the past five years due to no energy supply. Circulating at night in this part of the region is extremely difficult due to the activities of the men of the underworld who have taken advantage of the situation to go along with their devilish acts. Hamshide has been deprived from electricity since the year 2014. We are in complete darkness. With the recent opening of the borders between Hamshid and Nigeria, economic activities along the borders has witnessed a boom. But due to the high rate of insecurity during the night, the vendors are forced to leave their business premises by 5 p.m. In order to address the plights of the population, the Kolofata Council has installed solar street lights so as to reduce the high rate of insecurity, causing the locals to go along with the activities without fear. These street lights are of great help. If the enemy is approaching, we can see them from a distance. Before, we used to go back home by 6 p.m. But now, we can stay outside till 10 p.m. We are really happy. With over five years without energy, charging a phone was quite an issue for the population. But with a generator offered by the council, locals express satisfaction. Before, we had to cover long distances so as to charge our phones. But now, it is close to us. We are so happy. The move has been greatly appreciated by the population who say will go a long way of addressing the problem of insecurity in their area. And despite the insecurity and rising threats from separatists and Boko Haram militants in the far north, Adamawa, East, Northwest and Southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon government says it has been taking adequate security measures to ensure the security of persons, especially school-going children in the Northwest and Southwest regions of the country. And this is why administrative authorities have been campaigning for back to school September 2nd, 2019. And one of those administrators who have been on the ground doing everything possible to ensure effective back to school in the areas of command is the senior division officer of the Indian division uh, for one Lawrence as Derek Jato reports. After visiting learning institutions and chairing series of preparatory meetings in what he termed getting the classes and the environment ready for effective school resumption for the 2019-2020 academic year, Mr. Fowang Lawrence, the senior divisional officer for Indian Division, is meeting his targeted population, those who are expected to go to those schools in his area of command, to discuss with them and then distribute some school materials and financial assistance. We came here to distribute productive materials offered by the Prime Minister Head of Government and some positive thinking elites from Indian Division. The, the, those materials are in their thousands, as well as financial assistance also in their millions. The gathering that took place in Mundemba, the divisional headquarters of Ndian Division, was reflective of the tradition taking place in other subdivisions of Ndian Division. This same ceremony is taking place in almost all the subdivisions that make up Ndian Division. And uh, as I said, this other gesture, this other lot of gesture from the Prime Minister and other elites comes just to complement what the administrative authority as well as the forces of defense have been doing on the field. On a one-on-one -on -one discussion with the pupils and students, Mr. Fowang Lawrence, the senior divisional officer for Indian Division, told Equinox Television that he has kept a rendezvous with these students and pupils to meet each other on Monday.
in their various campuses. And they have given me a firm promise that there, 7 o'clock, all of them are going to be there on their campuses. And I, um, I'm also warning that for this year, PTF is suppressed in Indian division. I repeat, PTF is suppressed in Indian division. And I'm calling on all the teachers, both at all levels, to be at their campuses on the 2nd of September before 7 o'clock. An hour away is that Monday. And parents in the Meme division have been urged to challenge fear and send their children to school come September 2nd, 2019. And the call came from elites of the division who converged on Kumba today to offer some aid to uh, school going children in that part of the country. For me, I'm Strong Standard Report. It was an unprecedented crowd of pupils and students that braved the odds today at the Kumba City Hall, scrambling to get their names registered in a bid to benefit from the consignment of didactic materials brought by elites of the Mehmet Division under the banner of the ruling CPD and party to assist parents who have been badly affected by the ongoing Anglophone crisis prepare their kids towards resumption of classes come September 2nd, 2019. Speaking while addressing the over 1,500 school-going youth who turn out for the event, the head of the CPTM delegation, retired Chief Justice Benjamin Mutanga Itwe, urged parents and guardians to all rise up, shun fears and send their children to school this academic year. He noted that the past three years that students and peoples have been at home without effective schools has made their kids all very empty and unable to discuss in proper English language. Benjamin Itwai said the items were not only meant for kids of CPT and parents, but for all Cameroonian children of school-going age living in the Mehmet Division. In order to ensure the items comprising school bags, pens, pencils, rollers, gates to the rightful beneficiaries, they have decided to entrust the sharing of the items in the hands of the divisional officers of the five subdivisions and members of the special committee created to that effect. Other elites who attended the meeting comprised CPDM section president, member of parliament for Meme West, senator for Meme, joined their voices to call resumption of classes, peace and normalcy in the division. The government delegates to the Kumba City Council, Victor Ngong Kele, used the occasion to call on all and sundry not to use the future of use for political matters as well as urge business persons to shun fears and embark on sale of books and other school items. On his part, the first assistant senior divisional officer for the Meme, who chaired the meeting reassured teachers of measures taken by the government of Cameroon to ensure their safety as they go about their duties for this new school here. Thanks, Dobe Trang, for those images from the chief town of the Meme Division, Kumba, southwest region of the country. In the meantime, Dr. Nick Nguyen, a politician, has emphasized on the point that the armed conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon is on and children cannot resume school in the present context. He challenged the ministers and, of course, all the government authorities who have been campaigning for back to school to send their children back to the northwest and the southwest regions of the country to go to school in those regions and in the present context. He spoke to Innocent Aze. Take a listen. I would like that all those governors and ministers going back to the province and asking children to go to school, they should not go around with the military. They should just go on their own in there to show us that it's okay for children to go to school because we will not have military running around trying to protect children from going to school. If they can just do that and go out there without the military, without using armored cars, then we will believe, of course, that it's easy for children to go to school. And these other ministers, too, who are asking that children should go to school, you know, as a sign that they are convinced that it's okay for children to go to school, they should carry their own family and children from Yaoundé and all the other places where they are hiding them and bring them back 
to the regions and when they when their children are going to school it will be easier for everyone to go to school that's the acid test and sending ministers and prime minister and um, uh, and the parliamentarians and meaningful people in government and governors to go on the field to coerce children and and ask them to go to school then there must be something wrong and it is that something that is wrong that we are not we are, we are not wishing to look at that's where the problem is and therefore this truth we are seeking lies there we also asked Dr. Nick Nguyen what he thinks about uh, what happened to some peace crusaders here in the economic capital Douala. I'm talking about Honorable Jean Jacques Kindi, former member of parliament, president of the Progressive Movement Political Party, and other persons, traditional religious and civil society leaders, some of them who came from the northwest, southwest, and other parts of the country to converge in order to discuss the way out of the Anglophone crisis and a return to normalcy. In in those two regions but that peace uh, meeting was a uh, hint that they did not have access to the venue of the event and this is what dr ningwayan thinks about that the country has become very polarized as far as the anglophone problem is concerned and as far as the, the children going to school is concerned just like there are many issues too and uh, I think what is missing here is, the, is where the truth lies. Because until we know that truth and accept it, we will not know who is right and wrong. The fact that His Eminence Christian Cardinal Tumi and the Honorable Jean-Jacques Ekindi, they wanted to hold a meeting to, to, to explain why children should go to school and how they should go to school. And the government stopped them from doing so. And so the question we have at hand now is whether the government is right in doing so or it's wrong. While the government w wants the children to go to school without looking at the shit that they have to walk on to go to school, the, 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 the cardinal and the Jean-Jacques Kindi are probably saying, yes, the children to go to school, but why don't we clear the shit so that they can go to school in peace? So the issue is about the shit. Not, not the fact that uh, nobody actually is interested in children not going to school, except Ningwai, I'm speaking there. Coming up next, talking point. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points and one of the organizers of the uh, conference, a ban here in the economic capital, Douala, is Dr. I'm talking about Honorable Jean-Jacques Ekindi. He is a former member of parliament, president of the Progressive Movement Political Party. Honorable, welcome. Thank you for inviting me and I say hello to televiewers. Uh, I want us to go back to a uh, floor level to start from what exactly happened. What happened concerning the peace conference that you were organizing? Yes, just a little history. We started with the uh, process in the 6th of August, with the first conference held in Salle de Fête d'Aqua. Then we continue on the 21st, the second conference. And the third one would have been something to establish definitely uh, the organization and the plans for this campaign of uh, resumption of the school. And uh, we did all the procedures, administrative procedures as usual. We got the authorization of the uh, DO, uh, sous préfet, and we had uh, just made a request to the, the government delegate, and we're expecting him to give us the letter authorizing this uh, meeting to be held on Salle de Fête d'Aqua. We waited, waited, waited until um, the eve, evening, late evening. Uh, we uh, started telling us that we are sorry, it can be possible. I said, what? We, we didn't understand. Why can't it be possible? The first told us that um, the hall was occupied. We said, okay, let us meet this occupancy and try to negotiate with them. We need the hall for two hours. Maybe we can find a solution for these two hours and the rest of the time we can go on with the occupation. And we discovered that there is no occupation. Okay, at that time, I decided to go forward by meeting or writing to the authorities. First, a government delegate. I called him by phone, he didn't answer. I sent an SMS, he didn't answer. I sent an email, he didn't answer. Then I wrote a letter, he didn't answer. Then we went to the uh, DO, the prefect. We phoned, he didn't answer. We sent a letter, no response. Then we went to governor did the same, phone, no response, and letter. Finally, we waited, maybe because sometimes it can be um, somehow delayed. 
maybe that we had something asking for a delay. We waited until f 3 o'clock, the time for the meeting to start. And then we discovered that definitely they did not want us to occupy the place. We went there just to apologize for all the people who came. And we now are really instructed of what can happen. We don't know why, but maybe that you have some enemies of peace. But if they are confronting us in this field, we'll be, we'll be obliged to do something concerning that. Uh, but uh, we wouldn't stop what we are going to do. Earlier you said you were expecting an authorization from the authorities to organize the meeting. But the law says that uh, you just need to declare your... Yeah, 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 your, we your declared. And, and you can go ahead to organize yes, it. Yes, we declared to the uh, sub-prefect. We received is uh, okay. We have the paper for that. No problem for the, the sub-prefect. The problem was with the government delegate uh, who closed the door and the, the, the hall was empty. There were nobody inside. And we paid what we were asked to pay. I mean, we paid for, they're asking 30,000, we paid them, but no answer. And the people who are just uh, managing this hall, they told us we have no instructions to open the door for you. And people, some of the participants came from different parts of the country. And yes. So on. How did you manage that? We just uh, told them that we are really sorry. We help what we can help because we have a strong delegation from uh, uh, Southwest. From Northwest, we have some incident because uh, they decided to travel by night due to Gosa and so on. So they took bikes from Bamenda to Mbuda. And from Buda they had to take uh, cars in order to come to Douala. But um, according to what they told us, uh, some people stopped them in the night. They kidnapped them. They took them to their camp and they asked them, what are they going? What are there were 20 of them, something like that. Uh, they, they told us we are going to Douala to attend the meeting organized by Cardinal Tumi and Honorable Jean Zakini. They told them that, okay, if they have to organize something, let them organize it, it here in Bamenda. You don't need to go there. They took the money they had with them and they brought them back to Bamenda. For those ones, we were sorry for what happened. But anyway, we know that we are continuing to uh, do what we have to do concerning do, this problem. Do you have any information as of now concerning the identity of the kidnappers? I don't have the suppose that there were Amba boys. The suppose, but um, I don't know if them themselves, they can identify who did that. Uh, and we are investigating to know what happened, but just to know what happened because there was no injury, no uh, torture. They just uh, took their money and uh, let them back. All right. So, um, what's your interpretation of um, this decision uh, not to allow a meeting intended to bring peace, intended to uh, find a way out of the uh, current socio-political tensions in the northwest and southwest regions of the country at a time when the administration has been uh, campaigning for back to school, preaching for peace, uh, preaching peace, uh, and so on and so forth. At the same time, a meeting that is going towards the same direction is hindered. What's your interpretation of this? It, it really, I can't understand. I, I can't. For me, there is no explanation unless uh, some people had some misbehavior or they have some uh, very bad attitude concerning the peace. But what I can say is that uh, they had to take a strong stand. I told you that I wrote to the delegate, the government delegate, so he knew he would have taken uh, some step forward. We wrote to the prefet, no, we wrote to the governor. Finally, the governor sent someone, but he sent this guy at 3.30. While the, me the meeting had to, t to start at 3. At 3.30, people have gone. You're asking me, uh, why are they doing so? What type of answer do you expect me to give you? But what I can say is that no way we are out to get the people, the children back to school. We'll do it until we reach our aim. We won't be afraid by any other uh, behavior, uh, people who are just hindering what we are trying to do. We are in over there. And I better tell the people who are trying to confront peace that if you want to hit your enemy, which is peace, make sure that he's dead. Because if he's only hurt, he'll come back stronger than before. So we'll be back stronger than he won. And I believe that. Before 15 days, we'll have another meeting 
and we, we take all the conditions in a way that it wouldn't be uh, disturbed. When uh, such a thing happens uh, in the past, uh, when some meetings organized by uh, the opposition and of course some civil society organizations are uh, banned, when such a thing happens, there is usually the issue of public order, public peace being at stake, a threat to public order. Sometimes they are accused of having some hidden agendas and so on. Until now, have you been given some reasons why that meeting uh, was I, I had I had no reason, but what I can say is that a political party and an, an organization for peace are completely different. It means that our first duty is to bring all Cameroonians together, no matter their obedience, no matter their party, their religion, they have to come together. It means that we must inspire peace. This is why we didn't react. If we were just a political party, we would have reacted. And maybe they would have sent soldiers. But we are not a particular. We want peace. And we have to behave like people in peace. So, you know, J Jesus Christ said, if you have you receive a slap on one cheek, offer the other cheek. We are not very far from that. We are not struggling. But we want the things to be done. And we are quite sure that once Cameroonian people will be united, nobody can frighten them again. And it will authorize us to be hopeful that our children will go back to school. I heard in your, uh, in your program that, okay, uh, many offices are asking uh, people and parents to resume school, to go there because uh, they need to, to, to do that. And like uh, the politician said, you can't ask a child to go to school if he's not secure. If you do it, you must make sure that you take the full responsibility of whatever can happen. It means that if you ask the people to go to school and something happens, you have to be held responsible. And we'd like to know if these ministers and so on are really ready to endorse the responsibility of sending children to school. That if anything happens, they'll be responsible with it. If not, they better try to find the better way to calm down the situation, to make sure that this unrest is at least down, rounding the school issue, and at that time, we can go do something. For us, as we are concerned, we are just looking at what is going to happen. If the school resumes correctly, without any incident, we are happy, and we will just dissolve what we are trying to do, but if it's not the case, we'll continue to look for what can be done in order for children to go to school with very securely. Honorable Jean-Jacques Kindi, former member of parliament and national president of the Progressive Movement Political Party, thanks for coming. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.